Alright, what's up Nicolettes and welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial video. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to upload custom meshes into Roblox. So I'm going to organize this video into different parts. So the first part being an introduction where I will educate you guys on what meshes are and what kind of files that needs to be downloaded. The second part involves the thorough process on how to upload these meshes and how to accurately work with them. And the third part is just me toying around and giving the final conclusion to the tutorial video. So before we get started, I want to educate you guys on what meshes are and what kind of files you need to upload for it to work on Roblox. And what I'm going to do is show you guys a bunch of tabs that I have ready and basically try to experience, explain what meshes are as best as I can. Um, so meshes has been around Roblox for quite a long time now. Um, this user has answered that meshes were previously recognized was a previously recognized feature on Roblox that changed something as simple as a brick to form uh, to a form of objects such as hats or gear displayed on a Roblox catalog. Meshes used to be created by Roblox staff and users, but due to inappropriate content, Roblox removed meshes as an official feature for Roblox users. But that has actually changed. Uh, since January 21st, uh, they have allowed uploadable custom meshes and uh, that gives a lot of users and, um, and game developers a lot of um, freedom and uh, connectivity with their games. So, um, the great thing about meshes, um, and if I go to the next tab, and again, these tabs are going to be linked down in the description below if you would like to read over them. And I'm going back to this. Here is a wiki page of what mesh parts are, and this tells you a specific set of instructions uh, that accurately depicts on what you have to do in order for you to um, to upload your custom mesh into Roblox Studio. So, and here is the point that I wanted to get across. Uh, with the new meshes, they do have collision geometry, is what they call it. And basically, whenever you upload a custom mesh, Roblox detects the shape of the mesh you uploaded and calculates the collision fidelity. So, that's pretty awesome. So the default one would be this strange blob of a wing. Um, and then, previously, I believe, uh, meshes used to have a collision fidelity of a box are a hull, which is real, which isn't really accurate, and they've upgraded this feature to have a more accurate collision geometry, which is awesome. Um, and again, going back to this uh, this blog, they have specified that you do need FBX files um, to upload into Roblox Studio. So, what are FBX files? So, I went ahead and searched up on Google. I have no idea what it was as well, so I also did a bit of research. And according to Google, or according to Wikipedia, um, FBX or Filmbox is a proper, uh, proprietary file format developed by Kdara and owned by Autodesk since 2006. So Autodesk comes into mind. Uh, that basically means that the file will be used or is probably used by a software such as 3ds Max, um, to name a few. I don't know if there's more, but. Um, and again, uh, keep that in mind, you need to use FBX files uh, in order for you to, uh, to appropriately upload mesh parts. Um, then I do have these two files ready to be uploaded. As an example, I'm going to show you guys in a second how to a uh, step-by-step -step process on how to upload your FBX files into mesh parts into Roblox. So this is a wonderful site to collect um, a bunch of... Uh, public or meshes made for the public, made by made from other users such as this person named Chapuku from a year ago and person named Gunnar Korea from 10 months ago. And um, the thing to note when trying to find a mesh is that Roblox does have a max, uh, I think what they call is a po polygon count. You can't just be going around and let's say buying a tree model with a bunch of like multiple leaves attached to it or like a really complex shape like this one because Roblox does prohibit the use of um, 
uh, what should I call this? Like, it doesn't allow you to upload such intricate uh, details into your game. So another option is to cut these into parts or whatever if you wish to keep that. But anyways, that's, a, that's one of the things you have to keep in mind when working with meshes. So I'm going to go ahead and open Roblox Studio. And it's a wonderful uh, title screen. And I'm going to open a base plate. So here we have a regular base plate and I do believe I have to insert a file so I can just basically right click on my screen, insert an object and I do need a mesh part if I can find it. There it is. Uh, it's under local script. It is called the mesh part and what I want to do with this mesh part is under the uh, properties tab under behavior I want it to be anchored just in case you don't want your mesh to be uh, frolicking around and doing all sorts of things and the next step I believe is you have to uh, let's see here so under again the properties tab you have the mesh ID and then you do have a folder icon um, when you click on it you have to find a file uh, that you need to upload uh, for it to become a mesh file but again let's go back into this and let's download this um, this FBX file. So let's go ahead and download both of these actually. So we do need to wait a couple of seconds. And again, um, I'm gonna repeat myself. Um, certain FBX files cannot be uploaded into Roblox when there's more than like a couple of polygons attached to them. It basically wouldn't work. There's a limit to it. So keep that in mind. So it, it is under my downloads folder and these files do open in a zip format what you basically have to do is unzip them or extract them uh, to the same uh, location um, you cannot simply just go ahead and um, grab the files directly from the zip folder and upload them directly into Roblox Studio uh, that simply cannot be done and the great thing about these downloads is that it actually attaches the texture files and if you're wondering what these actual texture files are for, they are used to determine what the meshes would look like when you upload them in uh, virtual uh, space. So it does look flat here, but when you do apply it onto the mesh itself, it will create the illusion that it is a wooden log or whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and upload this wooden log, shall we? So let's go into my downloads. And if you heard that little beep, that was my printer turning itself off. <laughs> so you, you, you do need FBX files, so it's right here. Uh, like if you notice, if you go into 3DS, DAE, OBJ, PLY, it would not identify the file. So it only identifies FBX files. So it will ask you, the mesh you are importing is very large, we like to resize the mesh. So most of the time, I highly recommend clicking this or else um, because sometimes meshes comes in many different sizes and you have to be wary of what kind of size uh, you don't want the like a gigantic or a massive mesh covering your entire screen now so I'm gonna click uh, yes and multiple meshes were detected there were issues could not find texture okay all right that's fine uh, just ignore that it did successfully upload and this is what we have right now. So it is gigantic still. So what I did was basically click on it and then click on my scale tool and I'll just basically, I'm gonna move it first and I'm gonna scale it down. I mean, if you notice that uh, you just, if I just drag one point, it'll just make it skinnier. Uh, what you can do is you can hold your shift key and then drag this to, uh, to resize it to scale, you don't want it to resize it indefinitely. So the if you're wondering what this is, this is this weird um, floor thing. It is attached to the mesh, so the mesh does include a strange um, floor. If you do have a software to edit this out, I highly suggest doing that because it is a waste of space. But for yeah, um, for an example, this is what you have. So you must be wondering, where's the wood texture? I need the wood texture. Um, you, you'll probably notice there is a texture ID here, attached here. 
and um, sometimes when you do upload meshes like these the textures wouldn't work so that's the one I shown you guys a while ago which is the wood texture right here so what you need to do and this is very important you go into roblox.com and then sign in to your account go under develop page and then go on the decals and upload the very same wood texture or whatever texture thing you have so uh, under create decal you have to find the page so I'll have to go to downloads and I think it's this one wood and wood texture and click upload so this, this should take a couple of seconds and now that's done wood texture has been uploaded uh, what I usually do I would insert another part and resize this open my toolbox go under my decals and then click wood texture and apply it onto the brick that I've summoned um, again if you want to if you, you need to be or you need to have a username or you need to have an account with Roblox for this to work um, which is uh, quite unfortunate sometimes because sometimes there will be free users out there who want to try out this game for fun you know but then it like ruins the mood when you can't do stuff unless you make an account but anyways uh, you do have the decal ID here so under the explorer tag I click on the part I click on the decal and under the properties tab you do have the texture ID ID uh, what you have to do right click and copy or whatever short that you like to do or like to use go under mesh part under texture ID in the properties tab just simply paste uh, ID and click enter and there you have it there you have your lovely texture so um, and again if you're probably wondering hey if I can just copy and paste a texture ID would wouldn't that allow me to uh, paste other textures into it or create my own and edit this texture um, the answer to, to that question is yes you can definitely edit this texture to however texture thing you'd like um, let me just move this down a bit there we go um, oh. where's that oh there it is perfect <laughs> that black uh, thing was just watering me sorry about that um, but anyways um, yes you can edit your texture however you want so I do it looks like I do have a couple of textures here already and I wondered what it will look like if I uploaded this for example so this is a plain wood texture and I went ahead and double clicked on it so I double click on the part to select automatically select the decal I went to texture copied it went back to the mesh part and then pasted the texture ID and replaced it so it looks kind of weird right I mean that's what it you that's what it should do um, and again uh, when you download these files uh, it is really useful to have these textures come in, in hand uh, come in handy so that you know what to edit because if you simply add a photo of any random object or any decal whatsoever it will just automatically automatically be applied to every part of the mesh so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and then let's say I put my watermark here and then let's say I copy it and replace the decal from the mesh part so it, it is it becomes a mess um, I maybe I can find something funny here maybe I can turn it into a brick or something so I'm gonna delete that take this brick decal and paste it in here so there so there's a lot of um, different opportunities to expand your creativity with this and which is great um, now let's not forget about the other example that I have so let's insert another mesh part and then let's anchor it for good measure and let's upload the file that I downloaded so this one is the I forgot what it's called I think it was the mobile home oh yes it was okay so this is the 3d mobile home and Roblox should start processing it it should take some time 
when it's trying to process your request. It depends on how fast your computer is. I think it depends on your processing power, not so much on the on the graphical side. What you can see, my mouse is thinking, and it says here, it gives you a warning. Your mesh has too many triangles. The limit is 5,000. Your mesh has 36,000 or 362,000. 862 triangles. So yes, that's what I was talking about earlier in this video. Um, you have a limit of 5,000 triangles, so you do have to be careful on which kind of mesh or FBX file you want you're willing to download. So again, for another example, let's do a quick search here actually. So um, let's do a wooden fence. Okay. Pick it, pick it. Or let's just search for a fence. And let's find a free one. So this one looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and download this file. And again, we have to wait. So let's go back into this while we wait and um, talk about meshes. So, and again, as a recap, you can upload the mesh ID using this and then going back into your FBX file that you just downloaded and then just basically upload it. And again, um, you can look into the guides here from the wiki page to see step-by-step -step process if you can't follow through my video. This is a very good guide on what to do uh, when you need to upload meshes. And I do believe instead of uploading it, you can also have an asset ID uh, for it. So. And again, you can go to meshes, and you can see the, the the meshes you've actually uploaded. So that's pretty cool, right? And I think I believe you can also look for meshes made by other people, but I'm not quite so sure about how that works just yet. I'm not sure if that's implemented yet, but uh, my file has been uh, is finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract it. And then let's go back to Roblox Studio and upload the, the fence that we just downloaded. So it does contain another texture, which is fine. And let's go back and get the FBX file, open it, uh, just click OK, that's fine. And there you have a simple fence match. It's pretty cool, right? Whoa! And it does it most of the time the texture IDs would not apply immediately. So again, what you need to do is go back into develop page, go to decals. Come on, buddy, do it. Uh, choose your uh, texture file. So for defense, we do have the texture available. You do have two options: uh, light wood texture or wood two. Let's go for wood two. Upload. Let's go back into Roblox Studio. That should be ready to go. And let's refresh this. Let's this one. Uh, let's refresh this. And wood too. It's right here. Awesome. And uh, whoa. Come on now. Okay. Close it. A copy the texture ID. Go back to the fence ID and paste it under the texture ID in a property tab. Huh. Looks weird. But that is what is provided, so you can't uh, start complaining now, can you? But um, anyways, uh, you can also upload, I think I have the other textures available, which is light wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the texture ID and replace the old one. And that looks a lot nicer. That doesn't look too bad. And again, these files or, or these meshes can be combined to form some pretty integrate, integrate things. So I can basically copy and paste this and move it like this. And this maybe rotate it like a bit to the right. Hold on. There we go. A more realistic movement right here. And then rotate this a bit to the right like you can basically do whatever you want with the mesh you can even stretch it if you'd like so as I showcased before you can just do this or do that or 
and again, uh, you hold the shift key to scale it uh, or resize it to scale so you don't lose um, its actual size. And here you can even do some pretty interesting things to this. If you're wondering which shortcut I'm using to copy these files over each other, I am using the command Ctrl plus D. So um, this video will actually showcase my keystrokes along the way so you guys can follow while I'm clicking. Um, so I should have probably mentioned that earlier in this video but it's too late now. So I think that's it for this tutorial guys. So hopefully you guys learned something. Um, feel free to leave a question down in the comments below if you do have any. If you learned something uh, and you find this video useful um, in any way. Uh, please go ahead and leave a like if you found this video to be boring, dull or something uh, Just feel free to leave a dislike as well so I can know so I can also change my pace And again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day